Welcome to Frame by Frame. Hi. <laughs> Why do you sound so shy, Andy? I don't know. I hate starting these things. You hate starting these podcasts, yeah. don't you? That's why if you had a snappy catchphrase like mine, then you'd feel okay. Do you, do you want to try mine? Just just to kind of ease you in. The clock is clock running. Is running. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Does that feel better? It does, actually. I feel a little bit better. Okay, so... so somehow, I just feel like, I wish you didn't have all this technology around me. Really? You know, it would be easier to just converse with my fellow people if it was in a sort of, like... I don't know, you know, like medieval times. It's very hard to do podcasts in medieval times, but do you know what? There's, there's We could do brass rubs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could totally do... That sounds wrong and illegal, but that's okay. Well, obviously, we can't go back to medieval times, but perhaps we could, like, get in a spaceship and pretend we're scientists and go off to a planet that perhaps might be, like... Stuck in a it, perpetual it, it, Middle Ages. Yeah, can't quite push into the Renaissance, I wonder... What you're saying is is that we should be talking about... Uh, what, what are we going to be talking about today, It's hard Andy? to be a god. No, 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 it's not called that. It's called Trudno Biot Bodgum. Yeah, but translated, I think that means it's hard to be a god. It's not the Earth, it's another planet. It's the same as the Earth, but not the last 800 There we go. So, Hard to Be a God is a Russian film? Yeah, Russian film. Um, it's three hours long. It's black and white. It's full of striking images. and um, Right. Yeah. Okay. Striking images. But what do you say by striking images? What do you mean by that? Images that sort of stay with you, I guess. Yeah. Did with me, anyway. And <laughs> yeah. um, there is so much in every shot. And... It's, it's, it's thick. It's thick. Yeah. Dense. So it was directed by Alexei German. Uh, I'm sick of it. Alexei German, I'm going to say. No, all right. <laughs> no, no, no. German. No, I don't know. German? German? So the thing with this film, really it took him... A Russian name. Yeah, it took him six years to make it. So it's already sort of infamous. From 2000 to 2006, though, that's when he actually made the film. Yeah, before that it was... The rest of it was sound editing apparently he was a stickler for sound editing right and he couldn't get it right well the the sad thing is while he was editing the film he yeah. tragically died and his wife and his son had to complete the film yeah I mean this is, this is obviously a labour of love for him I mean it's mm -hmm. it's uh, adapted from a, an old Russian uh, 1964 Russian novel yeah um, of the same name uh, naturally he had his own vision for this and it was a very unique vision for it he mm. had a very stylized way of, of putting this, this book onto film there are other versions of this book that have actually been put out there in shorter versions right. of the film in colour and they run on a kind of a, 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 a typical narrative story you see characters in the distance talking right. and you cut to what they're taught looking at and it's it's you know what you would expect from a normal film a normal telling of any any story or book, and there's sci-fi elements in that. There's strong sci-fi elements in that. Film. Yeah. This one, however, is straight away you're into the into the the narrative of this guy, who is who says he's an astronaut. Yeah. And he is visiting a planet that is living in a perpetual Middle Ages. Yeah. 
but there is nothing um, outside of the world that, that we're actually looking at. There's nothing su that suggests beyond science fiction. Yeah, you saw. It, so the camera is this person, isn't That's it? That's it. The camera the is the person. So the camera is the only bit of technology that. Is, I'd say the is, camera is God. I mean, if we're talking about an omniscient uh, um, um, observer, as we are, we are observing this film. The, the that that cameraman doesn't get harmed doesn't get accosted doesn't get raped doesn't you know everything is fine he's able to freely go around this this story without any harm so yeah. there is a certain godliness about that which i think is probably where he got that idea from mm. but but the, but yeah. yeah but the um the other scientist who we do see a lot of who's, the one who's in front of the camera who's in front of the camera he's he sort of took on a kind of deity form himself, whether he's proclaimed that he is a god himself mm -hmm. or everyone has took him as being a god. Yeah, I think there was mixed feelings. Yeah. I, I got it as mixed feelings because a lot of people were kind of sitting on the fence, quite literally, just sitting yeah. <laughs> on a fence, looking over and, and, and just, you know, some were disgusted with him and some were kind of like, most most of them were kind of fascinated yeah. by him and wanted to dance around the, for the only bit of dialogue that really made any sense was at the very beginning when yeah. he the the overdub god shall we say the other scientist who's behind the camera is saying that like you know I've come to this planet that is just like earth but like 800 years prior and that part that little speech all makes perfect sense and I, lo I actually sort of fell in love with this shot where it was just on the stream and very slowly just sort of panned up and then you just saw this village with people working and doing their own thing. And I love that image. It is authentic. Yeah, it feels very... like, wow, wow, mm -hmm. that's been made. You know what I mean? Someone's made that. and But then 10 minutes into it, someone takes a shit out of the top of a window and two peasants rub it into their own faces. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I know, as if it's really happening in front of you. And yeah, you know. I mean, it, it, does, it does have a, an extraordinary sense of... of raw real it doesn't it doesn't pretend to be anything but a film about two scientists who are on a planet it, it's everybody's really into the role everybody's into the era there's no illusions here it's really happening they, they, they went that far to make everything that real the only difficulty is is because it's black and white you don't know the difference between Phil from custard but <laughs> part of me, it part of me thought while watching this, if the film was in colour, I don't think I've been able to stomach it. That's what I'm thinking because they're all the, the you, you'd see what what's blood, you yeah. see where the blood begins and the shit ends. It immediately know? makes me think of that part in Kill Bill where they had to make it black and white when she fights all those guys because it was so gory. Mm. They made it black and white so. You could, you know, obviously the past the senses. People, yeah, people think right. People can stomach that now. It's in black and white. But this that was like that was like two thousand really. I don't think they had much to worry about because around the corner all the gorier slasher films and sore films were just going to happen. So yeah, yeah, maybe they were a little bit too worried. I want. I, I doubt Tarantino does anything that doesn't want to do. I'm, so I think I'm not too sure. Probably... I'm not. I'm not too sure if I should do this. I know. I'm, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to hold back. I'm going. I'm really going to hold back. Woody Allen. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> the same first. But but they, but they are fast talking directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Martin Scorsese, like that. But yeah, I mean, this. It is, yeah. So but, everything is covered is... in mud and dirt and grime, and you feel that it's just awful existence, and everyone stinks, and it's. You know when you watch a um, um, what are the cards called? A uh, hallmark, a hallmark movie, Christmas movie. Yeah. And you see the two two squeaky clean characters walking down the street, and they walk over the snow, which is actually uh, fabric, and right. it gets caught on the heel, and, it, and you can see it, but it gets picked up, and right. you can tell, oh, that's a set. Um, you never, for one second, feel as though you're in a a, a, a kind of a hallmark movie. No. This. You feel as everything is. There's n nothing gets nothing's flappy, nothing's light everything's heavy you know when they when they're carrying big structures they are really carrying big structures nothing looks like it's been movie made it looks like it's just there and that's to me what i think the film's about it's about observing yeah. things and by 
being an observer of something, do you somehow change? Like, like if we went to a tribe in the Amazon, absolutely, uh, and no one's ever been there before, by you going observing them, you change that tribe. That's it. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think that's an influence. The, I think that's what the film's about. It's about the very the, the seeds of of influence. Yeah, and how that can. I mean, you could say that maybe the, the um, that this is actually the influence that they need to actually change the course of their history. This is how it, it always starts with just one little thing. This could also be the, the start of a new messiah. Um, mm. it, uh, you know, this is probably how gods are created. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. how you know Jesus was an astronaut, kind of a storyline. Yeah, um, and then it, it spreads and spreads and it becomes this whole thing but like we say we're only seeing we're almost as if we're only just seeing a glimpse of the seeds being planted yeah. in the change of this entire culture on this planet mm. it's very bizarre though it's very bizarre to a, a project a very ambitious a project you have to <laughs> <Yeah>. be <laughs> you have to be so committed to to spend every day doing the same dirty shoot I mean, for six years shooting this, you are. And, and what's amazing, if it took him six years to shoot it, yeah. all the main characters in it look the same. No one seems true. to have changed in six but, years. You're right, you're right. But plus, plus, really, in that kind of a circumstance, even if they, even if one had lost an ear, and uh, or one had shaved his beard, just paint it over with a bit of shit or blood. Something is yeah. bound to have happened in that scene. Whereas a few seconds later, somebody's thrown something at them and they've got they're covered in stuff. It, you you wouldn't even notice if they've aged, even if it was yeah. Even if it was like no, it's not like boyhood where there's literally a child growing up to be a man. You know, six years in an adult's life isn't that much of a. I suppose so. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But uh, I'm but, not. I was trying to make an argument. Oh no, I know. Yeah, but but so I suppose just to keep it, look, it looking it, authentic, looking, looking authentic. It looks like it lasted about three or four days. Yeah, we were observing. the lighting was always the same. Yeah, and it's a hard watch, man. It is a hard watch. Um, I think I concentr- I had more concentration when they went inside a building because things got a little bit more. You know, the 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 saturation of the image, where what is true black or what is true white. Yeah. They rarely touched upon true black or true white as a, as a color palette. Everything was kind of within, I hate to say it, but shades of gray. Right. Um, it was yeah, the, it's a very muted, low saturation palette. Yeah. Um, but when you go inside, they kind of ramp it up a little bit, and you can tell where darkness the darkness is around the edges, and the candles are purer and lighter, and clothing you can actually see because they've mm. all had a wash. Um, yeah, but everything is just so grey in the outside, and yeah. I, I find it very hard to concentrate on what was really going on. And I think that that's the thing about this: is, is a it's quite an endurance test to actually stay the course for the whole three hours. Mm. Did you watch it straight without a break? Uh, did I? Yes. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. But it was it was more because I was. This is the first movie I've ever tweeted whilst watching a film. I needed to tweet whilst yeah. watching this film so that I could stay with it because you were tweeting me and I was out on a hike and I was sort of like watch the film stop tweeting me so I, I stopped tweeting you because I thought you need to be in it you don't know you can't yeah. miss a thing but if, if I did that I would have just passively just lost it and I don't know I, I, it, I just couldn't stay I mean there was a few moments where I did just drift away because I, I just wasn't invested in what I was looking at I found it very hard to concentrate yeah, I think because all the di- no dialogue makes sense. So one person will say something to someone, and then what they reply back yeah. bears no resemblance to what they've just been asked. Did you buy dog treats for the dog that you're looking after? Blue mailboxes really make me feel strange. Oh my gosh, I think I need to light that candle. Do you like that kind of music? I'm going to scratch myself. Exactly, you know what I mean? That's kind of what it's like. Yeah, the last, not, di- not, the last dialogue in the film, yeah. I uh, memorised it, and now <laughs> I'm going to ruin it because I just put myself on it. It is, um, they're all walking off and they're sort of whistling that song, aren't they? And yeah. then you have the, uh, it's like a farmer with his son seems to walk into shot. Yeah. And he's like, do you like this song? And then the son's like, I don't know because it makes me feel sick. And then the guy replies, yes. And that's the last dialogue in the film. I was like, What? <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, it's like right. it's very, it's Lynchian. 
but, <laughs> but you, almost like reverse it's like, like a reverse conversation yeah yeah I like, so, like yeah. you could like yes was supposed to be the first thing they said and you know it's, it, it's kind of yeah it doesn't make a lot of sense but maybe that's just they're, they're trying to make it look the same as our middle ages our dark ages yeah. but at the same time probably the language is different maybe conversation maybe he, they thought that deeply about the whole conversation structure that not everybody on this planet says what they actually want to say or answers what they want to do in their immediate time but to, to me I kind of didn't feel invested be, simply because they were leaning towards something that could have been construed as being earth history yeah. it could have just been a slice out of the book of, of history in our past um, this could have just been Soviet Russia back in the 1500s, mm. as f uh, for all I knew. Mm. The only thing that separated that was the fact that they had a conversation at the beginning about being astronauts. Yeah. But the nomenclature has nothing to do with with being on a different planet. Uh, to, to me, it kind of it kind of felt as though I wanted them to do something that was alien to Earth. <laughs> And distinguish themselves a little bit different. Still be that type of culture, right. but do something slightly different. Maybe if they were telepathic or something, or right. if they were, if they had the ability to jump, if the gravity was different, or something, something that put it in the genre of science fiction rather than just assumed science fiction. Yeah. Which is kind of my only argument about the film is that it's not really science. No, fiction. it's it's not. <sighs> People have said that they've argued that you have to make it say it's sci-fi because they say they're astronauts. I don't really think you have to because no. there's no sci-fi elements. It's uh, I think I had it in my head the other day what the genre was, and it's it's kind of like alternate reality, and that's okay. I can play with that idea of alternate reality. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean it's Earth reality. It's just an alternate reality. Like Star Wars is an alternate reality. Yeah. But with strong science fiction conventions, maybe. Yeah, but then, I suppose, in one respect, you can argue that everything is every film, everything is set in space. No, yeah, because we're all on this planet. Yeah, Pride yeah. and Prejudice. It's a sci-fi <laughs> book a sci because book. technically it's based in space because we everything is. <laughs> that's where that's where we start to go a little bit quasi because it's. <laughs> But, but it would be science fiction if Elizabeth Bennett told Darcy I'm not really human I'm actually an alien I'm here to observe you carry on Yeah. and then the rest of the movie is just her being Elizabeth Bennett but because in the back of our minds we're thinking oh she's actually an alien that makes the whole Project and Project a sci-fi I suppose so yeah it does but then everything's sci-fi because everything's set in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, everything's sci-fi. Everything's science fiction. But then, yeah, oh, that's, even action films. I mean, even, even Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible. If you look at those movies, the action is impossible. The yeah. action things. That, I mean, things that they did in Speed, the film in Die Hard. The amount of times that Jean McClane should have died. It's science fiction, man. Absolutely. They should have died. And so, yeah, I mean, the only thing that, that distinguishes us, I mean, we had this discussion about what was science fiction a while ago, in a few episodes ago, but mm. the only thing, distinction is is that, is that for, for something to be considered science fiction, it has to be something that is not conceivable in our current reality. We, we, we base it more on, on technology, on, on that vision, so that, that yeah. there are edges that are blurred, and I think this is just one of those that is far at the edge of, of the blurred reality of what a genre is for science fiction. Right on the edge. What? Right, cause I think the film's about observing. It is about observing. That's what I think it's about, but narratively, it isn't really about anything, is it? There's no plot. Well, the, if you actually read the plot... I actually read the plot afterwards right. to find out what was going on, and apparently they were going to visit the other, find the other scientists or something, and meet. They met with a group of people, and they turned out to be a little bit Zionist and a bit odd and, and unusual and religious, and and then they went there and they did this, and this person killed him, and then and I was like, did they, did all this happen, mm. or did it was it just simply it happened, and it was like you were you're either there or you're not. You're observing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything that you see in the plot actually happened in front of you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're taking that as... One point it, of view. It, it, yeah, it, 
And it's sort of like you have to know that before you into the yeah. film because they don't really explain that much in the film. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so yeah. you don't know if... if so if, as you go into the cinema to watch it, they have to give you a pamphlet of this is what happened before and then this is what happens for the three hours afterwards and then blah, blah, blah. These blah, are the blah. things that happen off screen that are very important to the plot, but yeah. you're not going to see them. Yeah, and if you don't see those things, nothing could make sense. Yeah. But, well, nothing's going to make sense anyway. But, but then I think if, okay, imagine if you were to, if we were to do the two scientists, okay? Yeah. We, we got our rocket. The moment you said that, we're on a scientist, I sniffed my finger. <laughs> imagine you're a scientist. Because what's that all about? Sticking his hand in shitty little holes and smelling his fingers all the time. and It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. It... I mean, isn't that what scientists do? No. <laughs> you stick your finger in some, like, arse nick. <laughs> I mean, I mean they, there's one scene at the, near the beginning where they where they basically uproot and, and take part a toilet. Right? It's a privy. Yeah. And they li- he lifts up the circle and you can see all and he laughs. He puts his head in it and laughs, doesn't he? And, laughs, and there's shit it. all around him. And it's like, I can't, as soon as I started watching this, I thought, I'm not going to enjoy this movie. No, 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 no. I'm not going to enjoy this movie because I don't, don't know why he's doing that. But, okay, we're two scientists, okay? Okay. Stop sitting your fingers. <laughs> we're two scientists. We... So we're so, two scientists. Two, two scientists, go on. We're two scientists, you and me, we go to this other planet, Yeah. you sniff your fingers, and um, okay, so we arrive and we've got, we're kind of surrounded by technology. First of all, we're going to get rid of the, hide away all the technology, okay? Okay, job number one. We've then got to blend in with the, uh, with the, with the people. Yeah. Okay? They don't speak our language, or shouldn't speak our own language, unless we've actually had the chance to actually observe them before. We know the language and we're talking Russian. Okay for example. Okay. So we get there, we learn the language and um, we're treated as gods because we seem to be acting slightly different to them. We're uh, we're not blending in as well <laughs> as we should be. Maybe it's like that, um, that Holy Grail quote where he says like, oh look, there goes a king. You go, well, how do you know he's a king? He's the only one who hasn't got shit all over him. Ah, very clever. Yeah. Very good. And a good link to the next movie we're going to talk about very yeah. shortly. Um, but yeah, you're right. But was the thing is, we, we don't see an event from where these characters originate. We see them as if they have completely gotten rid of any creature comfort. They've literally just... They're living the life on this planet. They're mixing with them, and yet they are regarded as being higher beings or or despicable beings depending on who's with for or against them there's and, and yet they just carry on what they're able to just walk through towns and cities without that much trouble yeah everybody well the other guy gets quite a lot of trouble he has to kill quite a few people doesn't he the one that we see in front yes, of the camera but they seem to be able to survive quite well considering that they're still scientists fish mm. out of water they're not going to be are they military trained scientists I mean we, we can only assume that these these two people have some sort of an omnipotent, uh, omnipotent uh, quality, but then uh, a bubble surrounding them because they they don't. I mean, I, I'm sure they would have been. We would have been killed. I mean, if it was you and me, we probably would have been killed off pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. It'd be like the 60s for you, <laughs> except without, except without Janis Joplin sitting in drugs. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, I just start, I kind of find it hard to kind of put the scientist in this movie. Uh, I can put the observer, I can put the observer and the duck blind observer in there, but I want to see the event of that. I really do. I don't. I, I don't want to just see people who are assumed to be. It, it, I, I don't. Th- I think it, it bothers me that much. That I, I don't think this is a film that you can be taken literal. No, no, no. Okay. It's got really no narrative. Yes. It's... So you saying I need to let go of the scientists? I think you have to them. because we see no science in it. There's we no see science. observing. We see observing. Okay. Which, I, like we've said, I think that's primarily what the film's about. And um, <clears throat> it's all about the visuals. Yeah. 
It's all about these incredible sets that have been built and made. And so maybe we're talking more about the fact that we were talking more production value than actual plot narrative. I'd like to read the book and see what I can get from the book. There is actually the uh, audio book. Yeah. It's on... Uh, is it in Russian? It's in Russian. <laughs> Yay! Here's a, here's a snippet. Wow. That sounds pretty good. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, it's very hard to actually put any snippet because I know we normally laid in this episode, these episodes with... with Parts from the movie, yeah, and everything I'm going to be putting in here is going to be Russian. Yes. So, what we should be doing is drinking <laughs> vodka right now, shouldn't we? We should be. I mean, we actually didn't have, we didn't think ahead and actually got uh, drunk. Got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it means just to talk about this film. Oh, <laughs> you know, but okay, let's talk about what we what we saw in the movie. I mean, there, there's there's everything that everything that you come to expect from. The, the the kind of era you, you you kind of and more I mean there's there's people being hung there's people being um... okay right so the main guy in it we see a lot of he's yeah, yeah. sort of in the omnipotent omnipotent yeah. and impotent <laughs> at the same time isn't he is that why he never gets his end away well doesn't he try with that girl there's a girl who sort of feels him and goes oh my god I'm glad you've got one or something and then she takes a chastity belt off. Yeah, and he try, yes. and he just sort of just falls off her, and she's screaming at him because she, she because, won't do it, and yeah. he just walks away. He looks quite drunk at the time; you can never tell when he's drunk or when he's sober. Because she seems to follow follow them in the narrative quite for quite a while. Because she comes back about an hour later, doesn't but she? But then she dies. Yeah. But the, the event of her dying is actually all seen or is not seen. No, you, actual, it just she's yeah. Talking, you she's go into a room, don't you, and then she's dead. Everyone's yeah. been. They're talking. Gutted. They're talking and they're laughing, and she's kind of like prodding. It's something to do with a brush or a stick or something, mm. and uh, she's laughing, and he's just talking and talking and talking. We move away from her, and then we kind of do this pan down, and we go across, and then she's got this blade or something in her head, and she's actually dead. But we never hear anything off no, camera. No, but then we never see anything that trigger camera. a bit of a fight, isn't? And she's been attacked. And that yes. triggers a bit of a kickoff, but nothing actually is seen, so you don't. So you're more confused. I, I was more confused about that because I thought, well, hang on, what's happened there? I didn't I, actually uh, actually see the actual fight start because I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of early on decided not to try and find any narrative don't in this. find it an hour. you know what I mean and just let it wash over you and just sort of you don't have an obsessive compulsive disorder do you, you I do but not for that not for, you don't have a neurosis for a plot <laughs> and storyline you can let it go I can let it go yeah and we, we, so we, can we, you with Mad Max don't give me that <laughs> 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 but yeah I get alright it's all about visuals Things that stuck with me were those awful contraptions that they used to yeah. kill paws. Oh remember? god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Disgusting yeah. things. Do it, to people who might listen to this have not seen it. It's this like sort of a wooden structure with this huge shaft on it, which obviously is a, resembles to look like a penis, but it's massive. It's like that big. <laughs> That's good for radio, isn't it? Yeah. It's that big. It's, I've got my arms big, yeah. quite wide. Yeah. And Imagine the bunny rabbit in Guess How Much I Love You, and that's how. I actually is. thought if we see that being used, I'm switching this off. I'm not interested. I'm sick of seeing how bad women get treated in film. In film and I don't need no. it anymore. But you never get to see it, but the implication being that they strap the girl with legs spread apart on one side, and then they use these pulleys to sort of just ram her against this huge shaft, which just ripping her apart. Just... And the whole shaft is covered in blood and bits. And the freak who keeps sniffing his finger, the other scientist, picks a bit up of the, the blood, doesn't he? And all it's all disgusting yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's playing with it. And he yeah. puts it in his face and stuff. And you're like, oh fuck off. These aren't scientists. They've lost it. Unless they were that when they when they first got there, they were pretty scientific, and that's kind of what got them their reputation. But then they kind of lost it because they got they were there so long. That they I, just, I, I think he believes he's a god. I think he, he's lost it, and now he believes he's he, a god. He, so there's the madness. This is yeah. this is basically. Uh, Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Who's um, without snails coming down? There's a, there's a bug in my head. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it is it is pretty much that. So they have they're right there under the illusion of that they they are gods. Well, at least I think maybe the one the, that's observing maybe he's still probably trying to do his job and not interfering. Yeah. So maybe he's watching Kurtz. Uh, he's following his scientist buddy who is now Kurtz, lost in the jungle. Yeah. And living with all the uh, natives. That's he's it. really good at saxophone. He's very good at saxophone. Yes, he is. Yeah. But that's kind of like the only thing that he's kind of 
kept with him or maybe that's yeah. but even that's disgusting the way he has to like spit and then puts his mouth over the mouth there was a lot of spitting <laughs> there was a lot of spitting in this movie yeah and the no the out through the nose thing where I hate yeah th- things like that I mean um, whenever I see anybody doing it on the street spitting I, I always I, I could be that close to making having an altercation with them I love yeah, that yeah. altercation altercation um, so get you yeah. over there stop doing that oh, oh. shit he's coming at me <laughs> He's coming over to have an altercation. Oh, I've got water. I got, I, I got you some water. Yeah, oh, thanks, man. I think it's water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's 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 stuff happening because because the camera is actually an observer. The camera is a character in the film. Um, stuff happens in front of the camera pretty much all the time. And that's one of the things I really loved. Yeah, yeah which, where, which I liked as yeah, well. Yeah, people looking into the camera and almost trying to brag off in front of the camera. Yeah. And you can see why it must have been so hard to stage because there's massive long takes where so much happens in one take without a cut. It's, that we know of. I mean, yeah. It, well, there could it, be cuts it, in it there. There can there, be cuts in there, yeah. I was looking for them. Like with Birdman, you can tell when they're there when something goes slightly black for a second and then it's not. Yeah, they were a little the, bit more obvious. Yeah, though. but I think with this, it was, I think there was at least three to four minutes with so much going on with the camera yeah. just moving around, following this guy, and people coming out of here and then looking at the camera and then like a boy jumping up in front of the camera and then disappears and then this woman comes in and this fat woman just lifts her skirt up so you can see her ass starts wiggling at the camera and yeah, you walk yeah. past the fat woman and the naked guys walking by the naked guy for no reason no just clothes walking on by. penis hanging out there which is. I kind of think is well why would anybody do that anyway in this time they're asking for something they're asking for trouble um, yeah, but it's, it's very it unusual. didn't seem to matter to everyone no, around. No, nothing matters just, like just, that. Just yeah, naked just, man, it's fine. Whatever. It's yeah. The poor girl uh, in the bed, where they, they're in that room where the fat woman's in, and then you see someone, you see the bed covers move, and we think there's someone under there, but there's like cats everywhere, or dogs, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. And then he's talking to someone about nothing in particular, and just moves the co- covers, and there's a naked woman under there, and he just and, grabs and her just, ass. Yeah, grabs her, and then she gets off and walks. And she away. just walks away, and you never see her again. <laughs> and, oh, it, it, it's that, frustrating. It is, but, but fascinating. But you know what? Yeah, and the movie. What the what this film has done is that it, it is it is pulling at your emotions. It's playing with your mind, and it's 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 provoking you. It's a very provocative film, and it's provoking you. And that's that's the one reason why a lot of people kind of don't want to watch it because they kind of it's they don't like to go through that when we're watching a the movie. They want to be spoon fed with everything and, and go, ooh, oh, I can't, ooh, what's gonna happen there? I was never excited about the next scene in this movie. I was always kind of ready for it. Like, yeah. what is it, okay, what, what, we're gonna go, we're going outside again. Okay, now we're going inside. What's this place gonna be like? What's gonna go and what's gonna happen in this room? Yeah. It was more of a, you, you, you kind of, you're with the scientists basically. You are going with the scientists. Yeah. And which is, I think, is a very clever way of putting putting the audience into the movie, pushing them in. Mm. And there's some incredible things in it. Yeah. Like, you know, and like the the image of like the children in all the mud and shit, and just playing with dead bodies, and all the organs just falling out. You see, like yeah, someone just, just pulled up. Them There's a guy who was dead, and someone just just grabbed something off him. Yeah, and, then and just like the, playing with it. Yeah, and all his intestines start flo- coming out, and then a kid just picks up the intestines and walks off Yay! with them around his neck. You know, Yay! it's like I'm glad it's in black and white. <laughs> it's in black and white. So there we go. I mean, they, they... but what, if there's one image out of it, yeah, what, what, what have you took from it? If if there's, if anything. Dangling from for quite a while, there was this long shot, and it was a beautiful big vista of a shot because you've got this guy who's dangling in white at the foreground of the, of the picture, and somebody's throwing a whole bag of stuff to somebody in the background, and they walk all the way down, and they're just characters having a conversation off the screen. Mm. So, what I get is it's just a sense of place, it's like the camera's just been put down, and they're having a conversation, and it's just whatever happens is happening there's nothing there's no reason for anything and that that shot itself kind of made me think this is what this film is about yeah it's about things that aren't necessarily on the screen but it's also about everything that you're watching in the screen yeah, as well. yeah. It's, and and yeah it's it's not it's not your usual movie it's not and like i said i got all the way through it is the film is about observing yeah. and by observing you influence what happens to a society by True. just watching it and that's it but one scene from me that I thought was 
it was tragic and awful but sort of beautiful was hmm. you know when there's all those I assume slaves because there doesn't seem to be anyone controlling them but they're holding up that huge wooden structure they've all got a noose the around their neck yes and you see them come from the distance and walk straight past and, all, and out back to the distance and then they go come from the left and go to the right and it just films the entire thing and it's just an extraordinary sure. visual yeah. piece of cinema you know yeah and like I said to you, I thought it's a, it's an important film. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's amazing to watch. I will never watch it again. I don't need to ever see that film again. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what, what I kind of went on to. I mean, is it, it, unseen brutality leading to sniffing of dogs? But did you remember that, seeing that bit yeah, as well? Yeah, that's that's what I remember. I remember these things. But like, like I say, I mean, it's the. The shots are every shot is is set up perfectly. I mean, how do you know when you're going to turn when they get, like, that something is actually going to happen in front of you? And that's what you I try mean. that with any other director, well, yeah. they wouldn't. When the, he's walking through a crowd of people, yeah. and some people are looking at the camera, some people bump into the camera, some people do but that. They're, they're all and then meant other people, to be there. Yeah, every part of that <laughs> it's was meant to was be done. there. It was staged. That's it's amazing. Like, it's like a, Roger, um, a Robert Altman film. I mean, The Player is a Robert Altman film, which is kind of like a light version of this. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where where the camera does move uh, for for a long, a long time, and it does go and it does observe. It's an observing camera throughout that film as well. Yeah. Uh, even though we're we're constantly with the main characters in that film, and there is a plot and there's story and there's things that we recognise as, as as dialogue, yeah. Um, but it's the way the camera moves, and you don't know how they set it all up, how the consistency with the lighting and everything. And I, maybe, maybe the reason why it is a very muted, shallow colour palette that it doesn't go into too much depth unless it's actually in size because of the, the amount of control that they needed to have to have those big long shots. They couldn't have too many extremes of lighting because it would have been impossible to shoot. Yeah. That when you go inside, you've got more control. You've got more control over the lighting, but when you've got too much of a wide area and you're traveling from here to there, you don't want to have too many lighting setups that you have to dismantle and set up quickly before you actually lose the flow because like that scene I was just talking about maybe a numpteen times um, one of them fell over or something that happened and it's like right we can't do it again we'll have to do it again tomorrow yeah 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 you know because it took so long to set it up and same time of day you've got to get yeah. the same time of day so and maybe that's, that's why it took six years I mean, to it, make, yeah but. it's taken six years because they had to have everything that's still on the same level and it's that took it intricate I mean how, we don't know how many takes it took um, to do this um, every time, but maybe it just really, really was that punishing of a, of a shoot. It but, looks, but everybody stayed it with it. Not, I didn't see any characters, actors being replaced halfway through. That's because a good director, isn't it? Yeah, it's a director staying Faithful. positive and excited about it. They you must wanna... have had fun. You no way would you be on that film for six years without really losing your mind, <laughs> unless you had fun doing it. Yeah, the Russians have fun. Yes, they do. Good. And they also build monuments for America that America doesn't get told about because they want to still keep up that fear gate and Russians are, are still uh, uh, dark, malevolent people with an agenda. You heard about the teardrop, didn't you? No. The teardrop monument, I'm just a uh, sidestep, but this is something as as really, talk about Johnny Vegas, this is something right. really positive <laughs> about... Um, they built... Uh, basically, after the 2001... Uh, the, the two towers. Yeah. Um, Putin and, and the people of, of Russia funded all together as a part of a, a pot uh, to build and send over a huge monument in the form of, a, of two towers and a, and a crack with a teardrop in the middle. They sent it over to America as a gift to the American people in consolidation and in, in empathy with what they what was lost. They of course they lost twenty six Russians in that in the World Trade yeah. Center as well. They sent it over as a gift, and they erected it in a, a couple of um, small islands south of the Statue of Liberty, or somewhere that's close by at least, but not many, much of a population there. They put it up, they erected it up there. Not one media, um, not one single part of the media uh, reported on it for years. It was regarded as only a local th attraction that only the locals knew that it existed, and nobody talked about it. 
Wow. Because they wanted to main that the media were, would never want to actually admit that Putin had actually done something nice for the people, the American people, and it's all a part of this whole and all the social networks, there it is, and I kind of ver- verified it. I thought, I'm going to do Snopes on this one. Mm. This is ridiculous. That that they People are so amazed by it and feel such an empathy now with Russia that it's kind of... The, the media is really going to struggle to hide these kind of things in the future, I think, and it's a bit of a breakthrough because they, you know the American people needed this. So basically the teardrop is... I don't know about that. That's the, amazing. Yeah, so the teardrop is out there for the American people to as a gift from Russia. Never, you know, as much as the uh, Statue of Liberty was a gift from Paris. Yeah. Um, but it was just, it's just never been talked about. Or, yeah, that's it. It's been right, a hidden, okay. a hidden gift. And I'm, I wonder how Russia actually felt about that. Why they hadn't had a a, a massive outpour of thank you or, or love from America. You probably would have had thanks, but not. From the general populace, it would have been, been a, it would have been a big private ceremony of thanks yeah. and on private networks. But it's just unusual because I think that you know, with Russia, I mean, they they make beautiful films. They have a beautiful culture. There are Russians who are. I mean, do you watch the Crazy Russians no, on no. YouTube? No, no, they no. come up with all these amazing ways to to make life easier by putting rubber bands in and things and showing you how to open a a, ca- a tin without a can opener and they're they're just really savvy really extraordinary uh two russian guys who have ha- life hacks for everything and they involve their mother into it and they're hilarious they're great Ooh. but people don't realize that that russia is an accessible place with accessible people and it's not about 1967 anymore it's not about the nuclear cold war anymore it's like vietnam is not about vietnamese anymore trying to blow you up whilst growing rice it's not about that anymore that's why the man from uncle was such a progressive show (laughs) yeah because it it was created by ian fleming who was partly created by him and i doubt none of that will be in the new film by the way I've probably no. I don't think it's based in the Cold War. Like, but obviously it was yeah. it was made in the sixties, and you had someone from Britain. Was it America? Yeah, Napoleon Solo, and then you had Ilya Kuryakin. He was from Russia, and they worked together. Yeah, in a progressive. series in the sixties, very progressive. Yeah, and the same goes for Star Trek. Also progressive because they, they but the, that was done because Russia was complaining. So oh, we've got to put a Russian in here to keep them happy. Yeah. Oh, we haven't got a black woman in there. Oh, this is it. You know, we need to do that. So that was more to me. I kind of get the feeling that Star Trek was probably less progressive because they had to do it. Yeah, well, the man from complained. Uncle did it because they, they felt it was. It right. was right. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, you can I? You, this is a film you can't eat popcorn to. No, you can't. <laughs> But that's what I mean. Like you got a film like this, which is existential and it's yeah. not. It's not narrative. Is there driven. anything in America? Is well, I mean, in in Russia, I mean, there are some beautiful films that have won Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film. Burnt by the Sun is a beautiful film. I yeah. love that film and um, fell in love with that one that came out. And I, I would love for you to watch it because it's a strong film, beautiful. Um, but yeah, there's nothing that that re- comes out really that kind of blows American people away. But then I wonder, has America made a film anything like this? Has has Hollywood ever made a film that's been like this? They wouldn't make a film that's like this. But is there anything close to it? Is there anything that is? There isn't, is there? No. You see, the thing was like with this film, if it made any kind of money. In America, they'll, imagine that they'll immediately remake it. Oh my God! You know what I mean? Forget and superheroes. Like... Forget superheroes. We want um, omnipotent camera uh, observing of scientists. But then it wouldn't be in like all these that... different. You know, it wouldn't. Yeah, it would. It would it be would, a little it, bit more you know, dynamic. It's hard to be a god. Sub, you know, sub, subtitle. Kill those comics or whatever it might be. <laughs> Michael Bay will be the yeah, fucking. I mean, <laughs> Gods with machine guns. Yeah, they'll be walking around. They'll be walking around shooting. Everybody who, who, who smiles at the camera and gets shot with yeah. a machine gun. It'd be like a first-person shooter <laughs> film, wouldn't it? Get away from her, you well, bitch. <laughs> Hard to be a god is a, is a first-person shooter. Yeah, yeah. It really is, w- without the shooting. It's a first-person observer movie. 
without science fiction. It's like that alien <laughs> game where people just walked around because they couldn't figure out how to open doors and stuff. It, alien, alien, uh, blah. alien isolation. <laughs> alien isolation, yeah. I mean, that's exactly, that's exactly what this is. It's a first person shooter film. That you just do. Without shooting. So this is what this film is, right? Okay. I've got it. This is yeah. what this film is. It's you watching your friend play a first person shooter and you can't Obviously. have any influence on what he's doing. You yeah. have to just watch him for three hours playing a game where he just walks around. Wow. You just knocked on the door of my brain and it's and the lights on and people are in. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that that's it, we've just de- we just decoded it the film. That's Within, it. That's it. Well done my brother. Oh cool. So I'm it's, it's, it's food the- now. <laughs> I think so. Oh yeah, dancing, dancing chicken feet in the camera lens. I have to love it. Yeah. Um, hard to tell what's really going on. My comments for this movie towards the end were, the film is technically... It was like, Whoa. What the hell? I mean, I said, technically I can understand why it took so long to make. That's true. We've, we've talked about that. Um, could the film be any shorter? Why do I want it to be over? I totally got that. I couldn't... I, it was no, I was never bored. I couldn't wait for it to finish. It was hard work. Yeah, at the end when he was in the pool, yeah. after the, all the fighting and the guts and all that shit. Because uh, actually that's when you see the kid who's playing in all the dirt and grime and he starts picking up heads and stuff and he runs off with some intestines. Camera oh, yeah, panning there, all the way head. through. The, up the head, yeah, it? and the camera pans yeah. through and eventually you get to the guy. Yeah, he's just in the pool, the one who is this deity, so so called. And he's just in his pool, and then he gets up, he's got no pants on, he walks around, he Wasn't that, sniffs something. That was so religious, spits. that was such a religious moment. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah absolutely. It? Yeah. And it's as if, like, that guy walks off, and then the other guy just gets on that virgin and crouches down in all the dirt. He's sort of like one of his disciples, so to speak. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, thank God, the film's going to end. And it still didn't. It didn't end, no. Yeah, and then it went on a little bit where they all walk off, and then you, you have the weird scene with a kid and the farmer. But it's just, yeah, when it ended, I was like, oh. It was, yeah, I I was relieved that I didn't have to watch somebody playing this game anymore. Yeah. And it's like, it's Medal of Honor without without the interesting cutscenes. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, that's it. Well, there you go. <laughs> but um, there, there were some interesting humorous comparisons that I made. I, um, oh, yes. I've started to do uh, Untrue Connections. Which, um, because there's one film that we kind of related to, um, Hard to Be a God, and that one thing that that probably kept us watching it, we kept on thinking about this in terms of being a comedy. Yeah, Monty Python, The Holy Grail, which incidentally is my favourite Monty Python film. It, um, yeah, I mean that and Life of Brian, but I can't really tell which one's my favourite between the two. They are absolute masterpieces. Yeah, Brian I wanna... flies in a rocket with an alien. I love it. Yeah. Brian is, is, is my hero. I worship him. Yeah, I well, I mean, and that's the thing, you know, he's in Judea and he's called Brian Cohen. <laughs> it's like a Welsh name. It's so genius. I think, I honestly think we, we need to dedicate a podcast to maybe those two films and try and iron out which one's the best. So let's yeah. not talk about Holy Grail too much. No, no, no. Well, we, we, maybe this can just be it, this comparison between the two. But if you think about it, Holy Grail has the medieval and the modern. It does. Because, you know, you've got the... It's set in medieval times, and then you have a historian talking about it. Yeah. And then... <laughs> There's your observer. There's your There's science your observer. observer. Yeah, it's yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. the same film, and then he chops his fucking head off. And the off. police go, all right, you need... <laughs> well, that's it. It's like, how do we end this film? <laughs> and the police arrest everyone. It's amazing. That's great. Perfect. <laughs> oh, it's I mean, so meta. Yeah, I think, I, think we, I think you're right. I think it's too soon to unveil the Holy Grail right now. Well, wouldn't that be an interesting podcast are we t- whether we're on the podcast we're not right now but it's to try and iron out which is best between the Holy Grail and, Bra- and the Life yeah? of Brian okay, you what? can be in Life of Brian corner I'll be Holy Grail corner that sounds like really good out. okay that sounds great we can be a, it'll be a, a what's that match death match yeah death match celebrity death match celebrity death from match. two people who aren't really celebrities <laughs> and don't really want to fight <laughs> a pacifist death match a pacifist death match to the, to the death hey you stop stop that sorry did I offend you I really didn't mean to offend you are you okay that's how it was in school for me I, mean, I, I, I got forced with the other person in the school who didn't who never had a fight because they said one day so you, you've never been in a fight 
Hey, he hasn't ever been in a fight. You're right, you two are going to fight. And they literally just pushed us together. And we're kind of like just bumping. Yeah. Each other. So I don't want to hit you. Yeah, just, you just, hit me. Just, just, just do it once. Just hit me once. Just don't know if I And then you do that, <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't we just we just kind of just pushed each other is, is that enough <laughs> can we go now <laughs> lovely oh it's funny but uh, yeah we don't, yeah, fighting is just not my thing right okay then so, so if I went if I were to say would you like to be would you like to be set up or would you like to be punchline I'll be I'll be set up okay so you're going to read the blue yep and then, uh, we're doing all the of them uh, yeah we'll just go line by line okay because okay, there's ten so it's, it's basically it's frame by frame presents untrue connections from one to ten okay in Monty Python's Holy Grail additional knights who say knee scene they intended to call themselves the knights of Mickey Nicky yes that's an, another scene that they didn't have knights of Mickey Nicky so in, in Hard to Be a God additional peasant who plays with chicken legs in front of camera scene um, involved a cut scene that was where peasants who complete a Rubik's Cube in less than 100 moves. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> if that made sense. Filming began for Hard to Be a God in 2000 and finished in 2006. Since then, the director worked mostly on the sound. Unfortunately, he died in February 2013 before finishing the film. That's not funny, but this might be. The cast and crew of Monty Python, Holy Grail, had no idea that this movie was being made. This was considered downtime. <laughs> right. Okay. For the Japanese release of Hard to Be a God, Hard to Be a God translated as Gods of Twilight. For the Japanese release of Monty Python's The Holy Grail, Holy Grail is translated as Holy Sake Cup. For the North Korean release, however, this film was called A Day in the Life of the Bee Gees. <laughs> in Hard to Be a God, the Arkanar City set was constructed in the vicinity of Topnik <laughs> Castle, Czech Republic. Pavilion scenes were filmed in Moscow. In Monty Python's The Holy Grail, the killer rabbit was real. It was something that Michael Palin won in the pavilion in Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to be a god is very straight vision of what the Middle Ages would look like if it never reached the Renaissance era. Perpetual filth. In Monty Python's The Holy Grail, is it a very silly film? It's perpetual silliness. Uh, so some of these aren't funny. That's fine. <laughs> it's a top ten list, like David Letterman's top ten. Yeah. On the set of Monty Python's Holy Grail, the catering refused to give the cast and crew any spam out of the tin during lunch. On the set of Hard to Be a God, they ate spam like it was caviar, which is exactly what spam really is, mixed in with horse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Originally, Hard to Be a God is a 1964 sci-fi novel by R.K.D. and Boris St Strugatsky. Strugatsky, set in the new universe. Original Monty Python's The Holy Grail is a book based on the sex talk transcripts from Michael Palin's early diaries. The Python team, uh, in order to protect their good friend from embarrassment, removed the jolly rogering and replaced it with French soldiers instead. Michael Palin never knew the difference, which made the Python team very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> In Monty Python's Holy Grail, originally the knight characters were going to ride real horses, but after it became clear that the film's small budget precluded real horses, the Python decided that the characters would mime horse riding while their porters trotted behind them banging coconut shells together. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. However, in, in Hard to Be a God, originally there were scenes where wild characters were riding horses, but they were so hungry that they yeah, ate the, the horses, horses instead. instead. In Monty Python's Holy Grail, the non-killer rabbit was actually non not white and was painted without permission by the owner, which may have resulted in an altercation. Another altercation. <laughs> in Hard to Be a God, rabbits may or may not have been used during production. There's no way of telling. They have to. There could have been an elephant and a giraffe in the scene, and you wouldn't have been able to tell that they were there. <laughs> right. Monty Python's Holy Grail is a very long episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus with coconuts. Hard to be a god is a three-hour film filled with flying circus of filth and poo. There, it there is. we go. That's our ten. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can tell I ran out of another <laughs> funny things to say by the end. But it is funny to say that the Holy Grail and it's it's essentially the same film, even though the Holy Grail's got more narrative. Yeah, there's a journey and there's there's an entourage. Yeah, of people and that it does come and go. Skip, and, and there is the future element in there. And yes. Yeah, there is the, the storytelling and the science. There's a, there's a science behind the observing of it all, and yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Yeah. And every so often they 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 find women because in in the film it's predominantly men. Yeah. Uh, and then every so often there are women, and they're kind of like a breath of fresh air, kind of. 
in How to Be a God it's not so much a breath of fresh air but in that one when they go to Castle Anthrax uh, that place is just full of women yeah and that made me happy yes women are good and then he gets rescued and then he's pissed off because he wanted to stay there <laughs> yeah. longer so oh, it's a golden it's a golden film and uh, yeah we will we will talk about the Holy Grail at another time yeah so, uh, so yeah, yeah that was it it's hard to be a god it's hard to watch the film it's hard to be a god it is it's the best watching your friend play a really boring computer game film that's, out there. that's very well made that's very very well made so there you go so check it out take me to the beaver take me to the beaver take me to the beaver oh, yeah. wash me in the water oh anyway <laughs> done